Blog Talk Radio. to shed light on the pressure of maintaining our human dignity and connection to one another. Tonight on Polarity Union, we will talk about living for the night, people who live for the night. Good evening, Brave Wolf. The movement we've been seeing um that the children and, and adults, too, of the Western world are being seduced into living for the night. Um, and this seduction is turning into a, a worship so that all uh, potential community and life-sustaining energy is being spent in this world of darkness where uh, illusion reigns. And I think I tried to on my blog to, um, I wrote a short piece, and I think you would like me to read that, um, speaking about this, uh, these issues. Yes. Okay. Did you read it? Was, um, yes, sure. Uh, it, it's called Living for the Night. And I write, so friendly and social they seemed that night. I thought they were remarkable people, this husband and wife. They were both teachers at an elite boarding school that the children of presidents and kings went to. There in that room, how at ease they seemed with a cocktail in their hand. The night went on until very, very late. They drank and drank and never stopped being friendly, open, encouraging. When I said good night, they spoke eloquently about what a great future lay in front of me because I was sensitive to the world. And then the morning came. I went down the stairs from the guest room and sat with them at the kitchen table. And I will never forget the transformation I witnessed. They were haggard and thin. They had run out of life. I could feel a profound anger and hatred emanating from them. Like forgotten marionettes, they had collapsed into themselves. Empty shells. They waited for the puppet master to return and reanimate them, to bring on the night and the alcohol. I myself tried to bring them back to life, to get them to talk about dreams, to speak about what could be and what I so wish to do with my future. I spoke with sincerity. I did not know any other way to speak or to live. They looked at me as if I were from another planet, a planet they despised. It was then that I realized that they had traded their life force for the darkness. Marionettes waiting to be made full again by their puppet master. Over time, I began to see that this predatory puppet master had begun to turn its attention onto the next generation. Over time, I began to see that the children of the Western world were filling with fear, panic attacks, like some insidious, silent, bacterial infection, these panic attacks are beginning to take over the minds of young people in almost every Western country. Young people are beginning to fear even the little things in life. Panicked like a trapped animal, the young people are freezing over and cannot protect themselves. What does your child's face look like on the inside? What do you look like on the inside? The signs are all there of what the future will be like for those we love in what our children fear. A fear brought to anti-life the moment we began living for the night, the newest cocktail in our hand. 
And Thank Lala, you. I received. Oh, you're welcome. And I hope it has some kind of meaning or can open up some kind of dialogue. I know I received an email about this story um, that, again, gave me uh, hope that uh, there is an awareness growing. And the email on on the story I just read um, went, another good observation of people, James. I've noted how so many adults can't function without some kind of alcohol every day. Like how the population has been forced to be addicted to junk fast food so it is with alcohol these things cloud and clog the brain not to mention literally clogging the veins and every cell in the body slowing things down and making people sluggish and numb alcohol in the night bringing false strength and visions and I thought that was um, very relevant and very uh, spot on about what uh, we are trying to do. Um, and Lala, well, perhaps I have a question here is, about the yeah. story. And, sure, of um, course. Because you say that the couple in the story traded their life force for the darkness. And when you say that, I think you're saying this on a few levels. Um, yes. One, the material, physical level, that they're trading the actual physical properties of the sun that give us life and energy and the ability to work, play, all that, for an environment that is devoid of these properties and maybe even full of toxins, alcohol, smoke, noise. Toxins, yes. And on the invisible level, they're trading um, on the level of spirit, consciousness, the unseen, uh, that they're trading consciousness. You know, they're trading awareness and presence. Yeah, the spark um, and reality for fantasy and illusion and And for this predatory, yes, yes. And for this predatory, you're exactly right, Alala. The the dark, uh, what I mean by the dark is the absence of a sterility. And uh, you're right, the the alcohol uh, takes the place of this... um, this vacuum, this void, and the alcohol and other things are, are are like a predator, and they come in and they they further the uh, emptying of the personality and of the soul. Um, and you're this not is what speaking I mean by about dark, a yeah. natural type of dark, because no natural dark is full of life um, and yes, animals of course. and night blooming plants and all that. You're speaking sure. about. An artificial type of exactly darkness. a dark, a absence of, and a spark of. Even in the dark, as you say, there is this spark. It's just another cycle of of rest uh, for the world. Um, and this is night is a, is a restful time of uh, rejuvenation time um, and activity time. Now this dark is an absence. This is a uh, Perhaps a better word would be an emptiness. And and this is the, the, relating it to the story. These people were completely empty when the alcohol had left their body. And in the morning, they were their material selves and spiritual selves completely absence of. And only when the alcohol began to go back into their system, and these were not alcoholics, they were not alcoholics. They were people who lived for this this absence of. And they had given away over life. They had become worse than alcoholics in a way. They then became addicted to this absence of. And they had somewhere along the line uh, allowed their true selves to disappear. And they waited each night for their... Um, their void to be filled. And it was a shocking uh, example of human life. And they had everything to live for. They went to the, f- they were uh, teaching at the finest uh, private school in the United States, in the world. Um, and they were tenured, so they had no pressure monetarily or um, anything else. And yet, they were completely empty. Well, there's a caller... On the line. Hello? Hello? 
Hi, Patricia. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. How are you all tonight? Oh, I'm fine. Good. Well, this is a really um, a very deep topic, isn't it? Oh, I think so. Yeah. And do you find also that the high tech world is equally as intriguing as alcohol? Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Yes, that's a big theme here. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I think there can be many things of alcohol. Alcohol can be almost a symbol of something that totally consumes you. And in this story, it was alcohol, but it can be, as you say, technology. Yes, for sure. Yes, and it's really all around us in the world every moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and as we're Traps. bringing up our mm-hmm. children, oh, um, yes. it's a very challenging to find a balance with all of this. Yeah, Do that's you it. have anything that you would feel would be a good antidote to this? Because people uh, are faced mm-hmm. with it. 24 hours a day? I, I, that's a great question. I mean, we, we do want to be proactive. We just don't want to show what we feel are, are really flaws in our current modern world that have to be fixed. Um, to be proactive, I, I think um, this um, idea and this reality of the bridge, I think we've lost, to answer your question, we've lost the idea that there is a bridge that connects us to um, the other world and that that is our future too, that it's, that we are not just material beings. And I think that the, the absence of, that we talked about, this, this predatory absence of wants us to never see the bridge. And I think that's the first thing I, I would say is that you have to start to feel... I, I think the bridge talks to everyone. I think we've turned away from listening, but I think the bridge, this invisible bridge that is what uh, material life has um, is for, is to cross that bridge with our consciousness intact. And that's our home, and that's our place of belonging. And I think if we kept that in mind... That, that then we wouldn't feel we would be more protective of ourselves and we would be more careful with what we allow this absence of to take away from us and we would easily say no to things because we don't want to give up that bridge that's a that's a promise and a reality and i think there were old cultures very ancient uh, persian cultures the zoroastrians knew about this bridge of judgment that all souls must cross and you could go to with your consciousness intact to the house of song very interesting um and where that was eternal life or you would be dragged into the house of lies where the demon would would help you disintegrate and that this bridge was that you had to earn your way across this bridge um, with your energy that came from your sincerity and your love that was the fuel that propels us across the bridge and I think we've lost that I think if we knew that there is this bridge and that there that this uh, sincerity which is kind of a sun energy that that is our 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 uh, rocket ships, that is our bicycle that will take us across the bridge. And if we lose that, if we are become like these two teachers, if we are really empty and we only live for what um, this control matrix that is in place now is giving us, then we will never cross the bridge. We will, you know, we've lost. So I, I... I think we we have a beauty inside us, and I think we've lost that sense of who we are. I'm sorry for being so long winded, but oh, that it's would also, be uh, yeah. I think um, you know, in a way, the point of pointing out the living for the night is um, 
that the type of input that we get while we're alive and living prepares us or for crossing the bridge or if we get a really poor level of input such as living for the night, living for the dark, that it's dissipative. It um, it doesn't generate or maintain the type of energy uh, that you need to either live healthily or to make a good transition yes. to the other world. Yes. Well, and really remembering, as you were pointing out, Brave Wolf, that that we have this sacred awareness that we have lost. We have a a sacred bond with the unseen world, but if we don't keep that connection, the decisions that we make in this world and the directions that we take uh, can be pretty catastrophic. Absolutely. But More than when, we could ever imagine, yeah. Right, but when we can remember that bond uh, and remember that indeed we are spiritual beings first and foremost, then we look at things differently and we take in this information differently. Exactly. And this idea of the bridge is ancient. I I would like to... This is not some New Age idea or pretty painting. This is a really construct of ancient religions and ways of life that, um, that have disappeared. But the ideas, this, this belief in the bridge, whether it was the Chinvat bridge of the Zoroastrians, one of the first really religions of the world, um, this they believed. This, they, 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 this was what they, you know, they lived to cross that and um we've lost that and now we believe that uh, it, 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 it's disappeared and that is a um that is a scary proposition because that's our final test you know if we've amassed enough care and sincerity to make it across and i i think how how arrogant that these two teachers were in their uh, in their way of just giving up this sacred connection as if it was a child's dream or a fantasy or a, that they just had such arrogance to know that the only thing that mattered to them was this night to where they could begin to drink. Mm-hmm. It was frightening to see that. It was frightening to see that because these were people I admired at a school I admired. Um, There's this sense also, um, the idea that uh, by deviating from a natural life rhythm, which would be out and up during the day and resting and inside at night, um, it creates uh, a deviance, a deviant population. It creates deviant people. And, um, you know, that's the the bar culture, the alcoholism, the crime. Um, And also with that comes a meaningless cycle of time. Um, You know, we have a calendar with holidays that are, you know, a lot of which are excuses for, you know, indulgence, um, addiction, consumerism, overeating, all those types of things. Absolutely. And I think your point, Lala, is, is... uh, spot on about the you know getting out of this rhythm you know breaking this pattern of you know being in the light and all that i mean you know we've talked before about how the soil is alive and that how you know, they've done studies that when children are away from the earth the soil i mean touching it i mean being on it that this is um this is a debilitating uh occurrence and I think the sun is the same way. I think there's something in the sun that is both... The light is special on, in, on two levels, 
on an invisible level and then on a um a for our body and on a visual le- level that we are somehow it's nurturing um and again i don't have all the answers about this but i i think that there's something we're very deeply connected to the sun um and again as you say with this this partying of excess in the night uh it also leads to the lack of responsibility towards relationships towards children towards you know um and i have seen it in it, i i call it the zombification of western culture this fixation on on zombies on this idea that humans are just so worthless that you know they we can shoot them all we can i i find this um this kind of um zombification of the night uh, really disturbing and we willingly join it we willingly go into it yeah because we are well, so mesmerized oh yes for sure i think that's what it is it's like glitter and we are attracted to it uh they make it very compelling and they make it so that if you are not participating in that there's something wrong with you because oh, we have forgotten yes. we are great souls yes yes and once we get on that pretty glitter carousel it's very difficult to get off because it goes Absolutely. faster and faster yes. faster and faster and like you said we are we are um for good and for bad, we are community animals and community souls. We we want to be together, and yet this impulse of being part of the herd is also what's keeping us on the carousel. We're afraid to get off. Also, yep, yes. So they they have they have trapped us completely, and they are, you know, very great watchers of how fragile human beings are. Um. And they have built these traps to get us onto the carousel, to make things full of glitter, mm-hmm. so that we forget. But so if when it was, we remember yeah. we are great souls, it can change in an instant. But that oh, yes. memory must be there, because otherwise yeah. we don't have we don't we don't have the the drive or the wherewithal or uh, the love. And that um, that moment when you're aware of what you're connected to, this bridge and this your soul and this other place, that that comes in in really a whisper. For me, that's come uh, in a moment in a farmer field, you know, in a very mundane moment that lasts only a moment, and things shift. And in that shift, I can feel something that uh, perhaps I, I, I would only cheapen by describing it, but I I have felt the bridge and I have felt the, the other world. And I knew it's a reality. And then it goes and the world comes back to its ordinariness or materiality. But I am left with that feeling that there is more to me. And I will have these. I've had these many times, but they are very brief. And I think you have to have a certain quietness within you to be able to listen to that. I think um, we're not taught to listen to those things. And I think we, um, again, I think there's skills we need to learn and we need to say no to things. And on this carousel, it's hard to say no. I mean, they every month they give us a new religion to believe in. They give us a new philosophy that will get us somewhere. And so we, we don't root ourselves in anything. And I, I have this um, image of uh, that I like to use of the gardener sitting on the bench beside his garden. And he waits there every day. And he... The world goes by, and he's making sure his tomatoes and cucumbers and things are growing. And in that moment, he is closer to God and closer to the bridge than anyone on the carousel. But how to get people off of that and to find meaning in that, in in relinquishing all of this glitter, that's another... Um, 
because the glitter is in technology. It's in my iTouch and my MacBook and my next generation something. And I can't, you know, I have to have that, you know, I, right? This is, it's a trap. We. Well, and often people really don't see it at all until they are preparing for death. Uh, and it yes. seems tragic that I know some cultures prepare their people for their whole lives to for the moment of transition mm-hmm. because it is so important and we are great souls and we do want to go forth in a stellar way. Um, so it's amazing that particularly in the Western world, we don't even think about a death passage in the least until maybe three minutes before we're going. Yes. Sure. And then they, they um, and I know this will be kind of controversial, because of the pain factor, but, you know, they drug people at the end. You know, even your Aldous Huxley, who was so um, influential on on the 60s culture, he had to have his drugs while he was dying. He was so filled with fear that he said he he had inculcated the world with this false, empty movement. And at the end of his life, he didn't believe what he wrote about or what he... And he needed drugs to be numb to pass over. And that's a true story coming from his wife. And um, that is the um, another trap, many traps to... Um, it's exactly what you're saying, that we have not learned to have the courage to, to pass over. Um... And I think, again, courage comes from sincerity and it comes from love. And when you love someone and you are sincerely with someone, then the courage is inborn. It is just there. And I think that, again, not to be redundant, but that is the fuel we use to get across the bridge. And that is what is, in the end, that is what we are. That is our true identity, that that fuel that is our true form, your sincerity and in what you love. And that is that is our consciousness on the other side. That is how we, what shape we will take. And if we don't have that sincerity, we'll never see the bridge. And we, again, I, I don't believe it's a free ride. I think it's a, we dissipate. And I think the Zoroastrians believed the same thing. And they, a demon would grab them if they had no sincerity and no love for others and would drag them into this um, place of lies instead of the house of song. Well, that is um, really a compelling thought. I haven't had that kind of experience with death. I find that we are eternal beings and that there is continuous help available for us to uh, move across to the other side. I think so, too. These and, are these uh, little intuitions, yes. So I, I'm kind of curious about this idea of dissipating, um, because I feel like we really need to discuss these things among all of us, and we're only going to get a picture of the other side a really clear picture from everyone contributing to the conversation. Oh, sure. So, yes. um, I, Patricia, uh, we only have a yes. few seconds left, but oh, we sorry. would like to continue this discussion. We have another show called Crossing the Bridge where we discuss these issues. And you are so over. much, you are uh, warmly welcome to call in then and next Sunday, and we can continue this conversation. And I, I'm Lovely. so happy, and I'm sure Lala is too, that you called in and added yeah, so much thanks, to Yeah, thanks, Patricia. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you for listening, and we hope you will listen next time. Clarity. Thank you.
Nein, Lara. 